Joining us now to discuss the Russian bank Gazprom Bank's uh, entrance into the African market is Deputy Chairman Oleg Vaxman. I don't often say there's a Russian bank coming into South Africa. It's not the sort of headline we see normally, so this is new. Uh, Oleg, tell me first of all, before we talk about why you're coming into South Africa, is what this bank is in Russia, where, where it sits in the context of Russian banking. So uh, Gazprom Bank is one of the top three largest banks in uh, Russian banking in the Central and Eastern Europe. It's a universal bank, primarily although it's a corporate investment bank with about 80% of its earnings coming from corporate investment, 20% from retail. Traditionally it's focused on corporate, large corporate credit, project finance, corporate finance and the capital markets activities. So it's one of the biggest bond holders both Russia locally and uh, placing Russian debt on international markets. You say third biggest, how big would it be in relation to our big four or five banks? Uh, it's about actually a similar size to your top banks, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, depending on uh, calculations, this is pro is about 100, 110 billion dollars assets. So this is about the size of the large South African banks, a little bit bigger maybe. Okay, so the big question is why are you coming here? I think a couple of reasons. One is we put about a year and a half ago our international emerging market strategy and our focus areas were Asia and Africa as the main uh, engines of growth as we see to the future and for our longer term expansion. So we are now big enough to diversify with traditionally most of ours has been in Russia and Central and Eastern Europe, CIS republics and within a year and a half we actively looked at Asia and uh, actively looking at Africa. Mm. And South Africa being one of the major financial hubs, skills hubs and banking hubs with a lot of potential partners here, we decided to start our expansion to a continent mm. uh, with the small but we believe very practical base in Johannesburg. Now our banking sector likes to think it's very competitive, although some people say they're not competitive enough when it comes to things like fees. So uh, what do you do and how do you get a slice of the market? You talked about the corporate financing, that kind of area. Sounds to me like it's Rand Merchant Bank and those are the kinds of banks that Sassfin Investec that would be your main opposition rather than the, the retail banks. But uh, how are you going to start? How's it going to look in a couple of years from now? First of all, I must, uh, must say that I'm quite familiar with the African uh, financial sector. I used to work for Rand Merchant First Rand Bank. Mm. Yeah, so uh, we are less of a direct competition, maybe to the, lo to the local bank and more of a complementary. Because when we are coming in into a large project finance, we're looking to provide finance as part of syndication or to provide our skills around an oil and gas because we are one of the most advanced banks on large oil and gas deals worldwide. And that's probably less expertise on the market than the mining where the South African banks are very mm. strong. And historically they haven't been much involved in oil and gas. Absolutely, and that's where I think where we can support because we supported the largest mm. deals in the world mm. with uh, Gazprom, Rosneft, ExxonMobil, Mitsui, all the international large mm. players doing oil and gas deals. So we see it's more of a complementary. There might be some competition around funding, but what we see in Africa is shortage of capital and not the opposite. It's not that there is enormous amount of capital flowing mm. around wanting to invest into large energy infrastructure projects. So we, the, all the conversations that I had here with the banks are actually quite positive and mm. less competition, more complementary. Well, someone like you obviously has an inside track because you have worked here and you know the, the sector well. Would there be partnerships? Uh, are you going to go for a listing when you get here? Uh, listing is far, far away, so mm. I don't like to predict in emerging markets anything more than three years. It's mm. not very practical, mm. uh, but definitely partnerships. Mm. So we're looking to partner both with, commercial, with some commercial banks and with some DFIs, so we're developing institutions which have nice pipelines of projects which we can mm. look at. We're looking at the short list of partners. We, our strategy is really to identify the key partners in the market because we don't believe that you can have 20 strategic partners. Mm. You really can have two, three, mm. or one, two. And depends. would they be names that we all know? Once we sign the partnerships and on this, there's definitely the names that everybody knows on this market. Mm. A lot of South African players see South Africa as the foundation for a business in Africa, the jumping off point, the base if you like. Do you see it like that? It's exactly how we're using South Africa for that point. It's the base to st first and uh, into SEDEC and then even into East Africa, although if we see a big development going forward in East Africa, Chris, clearly Kenya is considered as one of the hubs there. Mm. But our starting point is South Africa. We believe that we need to learn to work before we run. Mm. So we, have, we want to get, create a pipeline of stable, good projects in a syndication with local players which know the market better than us. We're not mm. an African bank. 
yet. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so this is absolutely where we, we see it from. Joe Booker's On place. the big picture for you, Arne, has to ask about the Ukraine issue, the Crimean issue, US sanctions. Uh, and there was a comment that we made on the show the other day that whether they have sanctions or not, uh, the markets can make their judgment on Russia's activities and currencies can change, uh, in foreign direct investment can change. How have you been affected by this? First of all, I must uh, say I'm a businessman, not a politician. It's very difficult for me to comment on the politicians of third countries and what their actions are going to be. From, our, from the impact on our day-to-day -day business, at the moment we don't see really any impact. Our partners in emerging markets in Europe uh, we all continue to work with them actively. As you can see, we continue our emerging market expansions. And one of the, our focus is really BRICS emerging market to emerging market business where we don't have to have a third party all the time in the middle. And this yeah. is one of the things. Most of the business and even some trade business and transactions business, we always used to have a third party in the middle there. Yeah. We are trying to do a direct business, emerging yeah. markets to emerging market. Gazprom Bank, that's not a name that's known in South Africa as a brand. Are you going to keep that brand? Are you going to uh, create an entirely new brand perhaps? Um, we hope that we become known. It's a relatively well-known brand in Europe. Mm. It's really definitely well-known. We're one of the top banks rated uh, in oil and gas in the world. So this Gazprom is, not I think, known name even in South Africa. Mm. So we will keep our name. And uh, we will hope that in a couple of years everybody will know our name here on a corporate level. So when do we first see the names uh, up there in the headlines and on the buildings in South Africa? We are corporate investment banks, so you are unlikely to see a name on every street. Mm. We are not a retail, a retail bank. Mm. We are looking to open our office in Johannesburg. Probably, I really hope by August we have an uh, we have, uh, uh, open office and you will see some name in there.